don't do follow-up videos, but on this occasion I'm doing a follow-up on the swivel lidded salt box. Uh, there were so many really helpful suggestions and uh, hints and tips on how to obtain um, a good fit on the lid and also to get the grain to line up. A few of them I was aware of, so what I've done, I've, I've sort of taken another three methods which are relatively simple, well, they are simple, um, and very accurate. Uh, the method I used, I'll go through that again and point out the error I made. Um, it's purely a schoolboy error. Um, that is quite a, um, a successful way of doing it too, if you do it properly. Um, I'd like to thank everybody for their input because that is what these sort of videos are about, what all the videos really, if people can pass on their experiences and what they use, then people have more things to to mull over if you like and they can make an educated decision on what they're going to go with. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'll change the camera angle and we'll go through the other methods and hopefully this will be of some use to you. May I suggest if you're thinking this, go through the video again and I'm not asking you to do that so we get more views. There are some loads of comments regarding alternative methods, some of which I won't be going through. Um, so if you're looking to do something like this, if you troll through the comments, um, you'll find some alternative methods there as well. Okay, so what I've got here is the lid and the body of the box and the grain lined up. And for the purpose of this, I'm going to drill four separate holes with four separate methods. Okay, so I'm going to keep my piece together like so. And let's say I want um, one hole here on that line and we'll call that the KB line, the Keith Barrow line and that will become evident in a minute. Um, the next one we'll call the panel pin line and we'll have that one there and we'll call that PP, PP, that's panel pin Another one here, um, and we'll call that the dowel pin. Dowel pin. And last, but by no means least, we'll have one there, and we'll call that CF, and that's for. No, you won't. We'll call it DF, and that's for depth finder. <laughs> this is going to be really, really technical. Okay, now you'll notice that the tenon is, I've left the tenon on both the lid and the, and the body, and the reason for that is that if I should want to do any tidying up or whatever, I can still do so. Now in my case, as you saw, I use button jaws to reverse mount it to clean up the bottom or to clean up the base and the top of the lid, but you can use a jam chuck for that just as easily. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is, first of all, introduce you to this little chappy, which is the Keith Barrow Center Finder. I was going to do a separate feature on this in another video when I did my next bowl, but um, it's very pertinent for this operation as well. It's one of the methods you could use. Now, Keith does these on a 3D printer. Now, the beauty of this particular little chappy is that you can actually go up to a 14-inch diameter bowl, 7-inch radius, on your bowl blank to find the center of it, which is much more than on the standard um, centre finders that you can get. So it's a great bit of kit and what I'll do is put a link to Keith's um, YouTube channel which is Wood Turning at 54A and also to Keith's webpage where you can you can purchase these. So thanks for that Keith um, and we'll use this as the first method. So what I'm going to do is to get the um, get the base first. Now because I've got the tenons on I need a couple of little spacers there so that it sits flat. It's also very important to be able to have the piece you're drilling flat so that you drill a perpendicular hole. That's also important. Okay so we'll find the, uh, the Keith Barrow mark which is there. Okay so what I'll do now is take the center finder and 
on that line, draw a line across. Okay, then find the Keith Barrow line on the lid and do the same thing. Now bearing in mind we want it there, so get the line lined up and draw a line. Now the reason I have this uh, groove is because that is the width of the base. Okay, so now what you have to do is to measure the centre So just take a ruler, measure that line from the outside, let's do it in mil because it's small, and that is 10 mil. So the middle is 5 mil. Okay, do the same on the base, 5 mil, and then with a centre punch, punch the hole for your drill. Okay, so that is one method using Keith's centre finder. The next method is the panel pin. Okay, so panel pin there. Now again, we need to draw a line where Keith's piece of equipment comes in handy again. So we'll draw, whoops, so we'll draw a line from there and again find the, um, the centre which is 5 mil. Just there, and now drive in a panel pin. And the reason for that will become evident. Okay, so you don't need much. Now cut that just leaving a little raised piece there. So we'll get our panel, bin, panel pin bit and line up the lid as well as we can. Line up the grain. And press. Now that gives us a corresponding hole in the lid to drill. So we can remove that panel pin now. So we've now got those two sorted. Okay, the reason we drilling a hole here first was for this method to work and I'll be using uh, dowel pin centre finders for when you're doing doweling work to, so you can find where to drill on both surfaces that need to be joined. They're very inexpensive, you can buy them on eBay, I've had these for years when I made a, a project which was all doweled together. Oops, there we go. Alright, so you, all this is 8mm because the rod is 8mm so you find your 8mm one and you slot it into the pre-drilled hole and like with uh, the other two methods you find where you want the corresponding um, hole in the lid, dowel pin together. So again let's line him up, get everything as close as we can. and press and there is the corresponding hole for that hole. And the final method is the one I used for my um, with my depth finder which is what I did on, in the project and I've got a feeling this is going to be the least successful but um, I drew a line again and put that uh, square onto the rim and 
got it as square as I could and drew a line and I did the same for the lid. Okay, now what I've got to do is to find the centre of that line where well, we know that that is. So now we have the uh, point marked, centre punch and on the lid, centre punch. So now we have all our um, marks for drilling. So now I'll go to the drill press, change the camera. So here we are at the drill press. I've got my spacers there so that it sits nice and square and the tenon on the base is raised so I can get a nice square hole, a nice perpendicular hole rather. Okay, so this is going to be the the dull centre finder. I'm going to drill all the ones first. And now I'll do the same on the lid. Okay, so now we'll line them up. Um, I've got to obviously lift it because I'm not sticking these in. So the first one we'll do is the panel pin because I, I personally like to um, epoxy the pin into the lid. Okay. So, and then make sure that the whole corresponding hole is deeper than the length of your rod. Okay, so, panel pins together, the panel pin method works perfectly and as you can see all the grain is aligned so that works really well with a panel pin. And the next method is the dowel pin which should have the same sort of results really and put the dowel pin in panel pin dowel pin and put that in the same hole that was done and again a perfect match on the grain and a perfect fit on the lid so those I think I've got to prove to be the best methods. The next method is the depth finder method, which is the one I used in the video. There's the corresponding hole on the lid. And the grain matches up, but, although it's not perfect, no, and it doesn't fit really well here either. Oh, that's because it's the wrong one. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> right, okay. Um, I added in the wrong one. Depth finder, depth finder, depth finder. <laughs> right, that was a bit embarrassing. Never mind. We like to show the mess ups. So, depth, depth finder. And that ah, worked out perfectly on the grain lineup. Um, and a little bit out on the body. But that is down to. I'm not spending enough time accurately measuring it and I think we'll find the same with the Keith Barrow method uh, not because it doesn't work purely and simply because you have to be extremely accurate when doing it and again the grain lines up fine but the body is slightly out but that's not as I say down to anything to do with the equipment it's down to the operator so I have to say um, the best method or best two methods are either using the dull um, centre finders, uh, the pins, or indeed the uh, little panel pin that you hammer into one and cut it off, leaving a little bit of raised and marking on the lid. Okay, so I hope you found that of interest, uh, gives you some food for thought, and I Thank you very much indeed for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you very soon. Cheers now.